Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, it's such an honor to see this grow uh, so well over time. Um, so just a quick quote, a multidisciplinary arts presentation organization, everyone speaks at least three languages fluently, English, artistic, and chaos. And let's be honest, chaos is the one that gets you through most days. So what makes us a 501c3 and a little bit different? Next. So this is our rather long, lengthy mission statement. And I can tell you at the moment, uh, the board is working on condensing this, as well as working on a three-year strategic plan that we hope to have all done by the end of May. Uh, the mission of the Masonic Theater Preservation Foundation is to serve the greater Allegheny Highlands community with a variety of educational, entertainment, business, and social programs, and to partner with the organizations in need of a facility to host programs. By doing so, the Masonic Theater and the Amphitheater will be utilized in providing first-class venues for performances as well as multi-use space for community activities. As a result, the programs and activities in the theater will augment the area's tourism and economic and business development while enticing more visitors to the Allegheny Highlands. The community will come together supporting and encouraging educational and cultural programming initiated, initiated by and for the community. Now, I think we can all understand in 2009 why they had this lengthy mission. Um, it, it had to encompass a lot of things in order to get the renovation done and to get people interested. So next slide, we're just going to take this and I'm going to pull out some bullet stuff for each part of it. Uh, next, educational. One of the things we've been providing over the last couple of years when we have our annual story fest is taking storytellers into the schools to reach all of the third through fifth graders in the county with free story time. And it's really turned into a wonderful thing. Um, they love coming to us. We were one of the first things to come back into the schools after COVID. Um, we would love to get them here. We are working on ways to try to find to get them here because there's nothing better than seeing Main Street lined with yellow school buses. And there's nothing better for me than to see and hear kids laugh and have fun. It just fills the theater walls. Next, um, we also offer a free travelogue series where we're taking you to far off places and we have the filmmaker here who can help you um, understand some of that. Uh, we have the candidate forum here. We've got lectures. Beth Macy was here. Um, we also had an educational opportunity for a young student uh, that you'll see in just a few slides from now. So we try to do as much as we can. Uh, is there more we can do from an educational standpoint? Absolutely. Next, entertainment. Entertainment's kind of the, the fun and easy part. Next, um, shows that we re most recently had, Anna Vidovic, who is a world-renowned guitarist, Tinsley Ellis, uh, who is an amazing uh, blues guitarist. The Everly set was just here, Charles Billingsley at Christmas, and we had a tremendous turnout for Top Gun Maverick uh, in 23. 49 ticketed events and 24 free movies in uh, 2023. Next. We've also got our movies at the Masonic. Um, you have seen that dwindle down a little bit. The reasons that, that was happening was that we were just not getting enough people here. And we do pay a licensing fee for that. And we tried and tried, so we're bringing back just a few. We've got Bar Week coming up next month where there'll be a little party downstairs as well. Um, and then our family series, we've got Mud's Gone Nuts. We had Steve Brogan, the ventriloquist here a couple of years ago, and Junie B's Essential Guide to School was here. Next, uh, business and social programs. So next, uh, in 2023, we had 27 unique rentals. 11 community gatherings and our underground parties. As you can see, it makes a great venue for um, weddings. We've got amazing pictures that were taken in the boxes that were featured in Virginia Living. Um, we've got multiple different spaces that you can use. Uh, that's Gail and I on the Emmy night uh, when we invited the public in for uh, the Emmys. And then uh, parties and then the coffee grinders. Uh, I didn't know there was a coffee grinders association until they needed a space to meet. Uh, so they met up in the West Rock Room. Um, next, uh, partnering with other organizations. Next, uh, we partner with Virginia Opry, Allegheny Highlands Arts Council, 
Cora Dance had their world premiere of Grove, and they were rehearsing here on Tuesdays, uh, Mountain Opry, and not listed on this, but obviously the town of Clifton Forge, uh, Clifton Forge Main Street, Allegheny Highlands Chamber of Commerce for having the amphitheater grounds from the end of the Grand Fondo, um, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, as they just mentioned in the, in the last presentation. So, uh, you know, having the election forums here is really great. It gives the candidates an opportunity to talk to the community, and we've had great turnout for those. It's really been terrific. Um, so, next. Oh, sorry, there's that video. Yeah, this is the end of the Kentucky Headhunters show, where you can kind of see everybody standing up in the aisles and dancing. It's pretty cool. And uh, we partnered with the Virginia Opry on that show. Uh, then, uh, our one major just incredible event that gets so much attention, uh, where we have many, 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 many soups made, and uh, they sell out rather quickly. You can see the line of cars that came in. And uh, in 2020, when I came to the, the theater, uh, you all had been doing it inside in the underground, and there were tastings, and nobody thought that we could be able to pull it off. And we put our heads together and created the drive through And so in the last three years, three and a half years since I've been here, we've um, given the food pantry around twelve thousand dollars so i think it's been great and it is a huge community effort the chefs put all their own money into it and so uh it's a ton of volunteer hours and we're very appreciative of it next tourism and economic business development next uh the last concert we just had a couple of weeks ago with anna vadovic we had guests here from Louisville, from Virginia Beach, from Pennsylvania, Roanoke, and West Virginia because they knew who she was. And so being able to get artists like that really brings folks in to our town to spend money in our town. Um, Anna was able to do a master class because of an anonymous donation from one of our long, long time donors, and uh, he will never forget that for sure. Next. Um, People come, when they come downtown, we know that there's an increase in business from performances, retreats, festivals, theater tours, meetings, events. And last year we welcomed over 15,000 guests for all of those kinds of things. Next, economic impact. A 2019 study showed that 30% increase in restaurant business on show nights. Um, Anne, is that true? Uh, and then this past year, um, we had the wonderful Kay England here who donated all of those wonderful quilts. We had an auction uh, that came in here, gave us international attention. There are attendees from 19 states, used over 100 local lodging room nights, uh, local restaurants provided over 150 meals, and the theater benefited from that and the town benefited from that. So we're going to keep doing those kinds of things. One of the couple of things the board has been talking about is we want to focus a little bit more on some more family entertainment. Uh, we want to focus on some things like the Story Fest, things like the Quilt Tree that bring many people into town, staying here, spending their dollars here. Okay, next. Uh, so how does our nonprofit work? And before I say next, I'm not going to go through the whole next slide, and I'm going to be, I'm going to do it very sort of streamlined if I can. Next. <laughs> so, <laughs> in 2014 and 15 and 16, the only person who really understood this was me. Because we are the nonprofit overseer as the Preservation Foundation. But we have three different entities that are for profit. And the reason we had to have those is they are what's called pass throughs for our partners who funded the renovation through new market tax credits, historical tax credits, your dollars, uh, Virginia dollars. It was a monster, monster financial transaction. And so this is what had to be put into place in order to make that happen. And you can see on the bottom three, Kathy Bryant was very busy. So we are in the process of collapsing. We have uh, finished our new market and historic tax credit obligations, our obligations to U.S. Bank and to our other partners. 
So we're slowly but surely collapsing. We're trying to decide, do these bottom three become disregarded entities? Do they go away entirely? We want to get through a couple of tax years so we can just make sure that we've done everything correctly. Um, next, our board of directors. There's no more than 15. There's a three-year term limit. Terms are two terms max, and then they have to take a year off before returning. Officers are elected annual, annually. Committees, we have our executive committee, finance and audit committee, buildings and grounds committee, a newly formed board of development and nominations committee, and Joan Van Orsdale and Lisa Dunster are heading that up. So if you're interested in becoming a member of our board of directors, please reach out to them. Uh, they'd be happy to talk about the responsibilities and the expectations. You also see on our bylaws here, it has an adopted date of 2024. We have redone the bylaws. They're currently under uh, looking, going through some legal to make sure that we're legalese, to make sure we're on the up and up. And um, hopefully we'll be doing those. Our next board meeting is next week. Mm, probably not, it'll probably be in next month. Next, um, how we all can support the uh, theater. Talk to others about the importance of theater. Volunteer, as the other organizations have said, we call our volunteers rock stars. They can be greeters, they can work in concessions, they can be ushers, uh, they volunteer to do Super Sunday. So if you're interested, Wendy's going to be out in the lobby and she can tell you some of the responsibilities that go along with that. And come see a show. Buy a ticket. Next. The historic Masonic Theater in downtown Clifton Forge is your entertainment and event destination with year-round performances, unique event spaces, and a welcoming staff. Visit historicmasonictheater.com or call 540-862-5655. This was an amazing opportunity that was brought to the Chamber of Commerce um, from SLS. And they invited all of the attractions to go in and uh, do a big buy purchase and we would get a 15 second spot out of it and it would be shown multiple times and so we kept on trading off so that everybody who bought in the craft arts and craft center the school of the arts us um, and some others all bought into it so it was an incredible gift that we can use for a long time uh, you can buy online next oh, oh yes this is it up at the top left hand corner is our donate button and under that, you can uh, do a, at, or at your point of purchase, if you buy a ticket, you'll also see there's a box or a drop down there that you can add uh, a few bucks to that if you want. We're in a, we have an amazing thing happening right now. The Allegheny Foundation has awarded us a two to one grant. So every dollar you give, they're giving us two dollars. So it's just been remarkable. I mean, since we got the grant, effective January 27th, we have raised around 15, just a little bit more than $15,000, which relates to an additional $30,000. So it's amazing how quickly it adds up. And we get that through our donation box, through our online donations, through sponsorships, through our red seat campaign. We still have red seats that you can purchase. So there's multiple ways that you can help out monetarily. Um, and all the tips when you're here for a show and concessions goes to it. Next. Um, so I came here in 2020 and I've spent most of my career in nonprofits. Um, I did work for a Broadway touring theatrical company as a production manager and you can be for sure that was for profit. Um, but most of my life has been in theater and it's been about community for me and working with people who have a common cause and entertaining people. And I've said to Gail a couple of times, and I've said to others, if we're in this theater and in a show and they're mesmerized, they're quiet, they're focused on what they're seeing, we've done our job in helping them escape and forget about what's going on out there and draw on the emotions of what they're seeing on stage and some of those emotions they never knew they had. So um, that's a big part of it. For me, next, and I feel very, very fortunate. I've had two amazing mentors, Marlo Burt, who is the president of Minnesota Public Radio and gave a young Garrison Keeler a platform to start 
a famous radio show that I think many of you might know, Prairie Home Companion. Um, and then he mentored me at the Kentucky Center for the Arts, and he taught me about how uh, rumors can be so hurtful, and he taught me about never ever assuming what a donor can give. Have the conversation, listen. Such an important thing. And I think all nonprofit executive directors need mentors. The other is Mark Light. Mark Light uh, has written a great book, which I recommend for all nonprofit leaders, called Results Now for Nonprofits. Um, I'm happy to show it to you. You can take a picture of it. Um, I made a lot of great friends. I've experienced unforgettable performances and ensure everyone understands the power of live performances. And I probably would have counted another mentor had I been here in 2009 when all this got started. And I'll just end it with a quote. Next. The theater has soul. You feel something when you walk in. Almost eight years to the month that John said this about this place. And I believe it still has that. And I believe we all feel that when we walk into this theater. So I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate all the support you give. And when does the two to one match end? The two to one match ends when we reach an $80,000 give back threshold. So when we raise $40,000, then it stops. It has a deadline at the grant life that it is attached to in September. But the board is really pushing for us to get out there and make that happen as quickly as possible. And it will be very helpful if we do, so that we can have a tiny bit of reserve. Any other questions? Awesome. If, as always, if you got something you want to see at the theater, call me, send me an email, let me know, and uh, we'll see if we can get it done. Thank you all very much.